ready. Hi, good evening. It is Friday night, April the 24th, and we are ready to start a Friday night prayer here in two, uh, minutes. In two minutes here at National Church. Uh, if this doesn't look like our regular sanctuary, uh, that's because our sanctuary is here at our house right now. And so um, it's become overgrown with weeds. That's right. <laughs> Those are my beautiful trees. <laughs> oh, and yeah. so, um, and so, grab your communion elements and make sure that your friends all know that they can watch at this time. And if you have any prayer requests, if you'll put those up, then you can. Uh, we will be sure and write those down and have special prayer for those who are going to take communion. We're going to have special prayer for everyone who's watching, and um, we're just going to get started. Oh! <laughs> Technical difficulty. <laughs> you you fell down. Come <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> on around a little <laughs> Oh my gosh! All right, so um, that was exciting. Um, and so, um, Pastor, I think it is seven thirty, and we're ready to start. If you. Um, or watching this later, you know you can watch this, of course, by uh, NCG Live, and you can also watch it on YouTube. And it is our Friday night live prayer, and Steve and I will be hosting this for the next, I guess, several weeks, maybe until this quarantine is over. Uh, normally, Pastor Fletcher Wright, Sister Kathy Wright, they take this on Friday night, but... Uh, Pastor Wright wanted to continue on Thursday nights, and so Steve and I were very glad to have this opportunity to pray with you and to uh, be a minister when you, with you. And for some of you who would not normally get to come out on a Friday night to National Church, then um, it's an added bonus for us to be able to be with you and to see you. And um, I think we've got some upcoming events. Did you want to start with that, Pastor? Well, we are in the middle of, uh, or in the first half of, first part of, um, our series that follows after Easter every year, which is From the Cross to Pentecost. And um, <clears throat> to me, this is one of the most enjoyable series is that I've ever been a part of and we we have done this series for what about 10 years or more mm -hmm. uh, and the whole thought the whole thought behind cross to Pentecost is up to the cross Jesus had been dealing with the crowds uh the 5000 the the crowds who lined the streets um of the Via Dolorosa. I mean, it was a, uh, it, everything was crowds. In fact, the, um, when the lady with the issue of blood reached out, touched the hem of his garment, Jesus said, who has touched me? For I feel virtue, power has gone out of me. And, um, and I'm going to slide that down just a little way so we can see the names. There we go. And uh, so power has gone out of me. Virtue has gone out of me. And the disciples looked at him like he had lost his mind. He said, Jesus, they said, Jesus, all day the crowd has pressed against you and the crowd has, has reached out for you. And, and now you're saying, who touched me? Uh, what's wrong with you? And, excuse me. <laughs> excuse Bless me. You. And uh, I am blessed. Yes, you are. And, um, and Jesus, Jesus essentially said back to them, he, he didn't, he, this is not in the Bible, but he is in, essentially said, there is a different touch when a touch is on purpose. Yeah. This isn't somebody just bumping up against me. This isn't someone uh, rubbing up against me or somebody just uh, going, oh, Jesus, Jesus. It, it, it's far more than that. This is a, a, 
a touch on purpose. This is a moment on purpose that I am uh, touched with a touch of faith mm -hmm. that pulled out of me virtue, which mm -hmm. pulled out of me healing. And where are you? Where are you, the one who touched me? And so before the cross, Jesus had been dealing with the with the crowd, and everywhere he went, there was another crowd. In fact, on one occasion, he went to the other side of the uh, of Sea of Galilee, and they and they ran around the other end of the Sea of Galilee, and then back up, and uh, were coming up that direction. And he and he said to them, he said, "Are are you just here because I?" I have fed you or are you just here out of uh, out of a desire for material food um you know sometimes I have said when we've had uh cookouts and when we've had get togethers at the church I have and, and there's been a big turnout for that for that food and all this I I have mentioned to Janice on several occasions you know I'm glad to see the folks here but are they just coming for the food and or are they coming for fellowship and are they coming for uh, uh they're coming to to hear more about Jesus so those things are the case but wow after Jesus hung on the cross after he went to the grave after he rose again on that third day for the next 40 days he was with them and he but he but he dealt with them personally yeah. it was a personal relationship uh, he was concerned about about Thomas who who didn't want to believe because he didn't see it mm -hmm. and the thing is you go back to when Jesus first appeared to the disciples and he had to deal with them for the same thing. Yeah. He had to deal with them because, uh, and it even says, because they saw him, they believed. And that's how so many of us are. Uh, we, we'll say, you know, hey, I, I'll believe it when I see it. And so he dealt with them personally, one-on-one. -on -one. He met with them personally. He, he dealt with the, with the disciples personally. He dealt with um, uh, uh, Peter personally in his relationship. Peter, do you love me? And we even did a series uh, a couple of years ago on, on do you love me? And why are you here? Did you show? Did you come to church so that you could uh, get some help with your finances, or did you come to church to learn about Jesus? Let me tell you what: if you learn about Jesus and if you grow in Him, you're going to need less mm -hmm. help with your finances. Mm -hmm. You're going to need less help with your marriage relationship mm -hmm. because the more of Jesus you have in your life. Mm -hmm. the more you're going to see results. He is not, he, he never said he was going to make you a multimillionaire. You may become a multimillionaire because of the changes in your personality that make you palatable. Uh, you'll turn, you'll stop being such an ornery son of a gun. So, you know, um, but, but he dealt with personal individuals and he dealt with them on a personal basis. And so that's where the whole thought of from the cross to Pentecost comes. The first 40 days after Easter is uh, when Jesus appeared to the disciples and worked personally among them. At the end of 40 days is when he ascended back to heaven. And then the next 10 days, they spent in the upper room. Mm -hmm. And out of all of those disciples, there was only 120 that gathered in the upper room. 
it, it, everybody, everybody didn't find their way. And I've dealt with so many people who have lost their way. So we are going through this series on the cross to Pentecost. And I have a, I have a surprise for you tonight. Not a total surprise, but for some of you, a real surprise. One of the great evangelists of this generation is going to be preaching for us on Sunday. Now, he's in Georgia, and he can't come up here. And so what that means is that just a few minutes ago, he recorded his message to National Church. And I'm thrilled by that. And, and that is Jonathan Ziegler. I call him Jay-Z. So Jonathan Ziegler. No, and, no don't cut. Yeah, I do. I, I, I don't. I call, mm -hmm. him, I call him Jay-Z. So anyway, otherwise I call him Zig. So anyway. But um, Jonathan preached. He, he sent it to me just a little earlier. I've listened to about half of it, didn't get to listen to all of it before we sat down here. But uh, Jonathan is one of the great, great preachers, evangelistic preachers of this generation. He, he, he has such a fluid mind. I, I, I love his, his teaching, his preaching. And the thing is, I have never heard Jonathan preach. Zig. I've never heard Zig preach, but what it was a totally different take on whatever he was preaching on. I will tell you that Jonathan used, he has been with us so many times that he used our format of the cross to Pentecost. And he, he really uh, praised our uh, sensitivity to go in that direction. So he will be preaching for us Sunday morning. If you miss it, you're going to be sorry, okay? So you want, you want to make sure you jump in. So um, there's a couple of other things going on just real quick. Hey, if, if you misunderstood me last Sunday, I need to straighten you out. I said we were going to have a virtual cookout on our back porch mm -hmm. and we wanted everyone to join us but we want you to join us by either a uh, 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 facebook live or by um, uh, by zoom i will be operating zoom janice will be operating facebook live that she's been on every day at at uh, 10 and listen if, if if you haven't been going to those you you in serious trouble because we're gonna we're gonna do a, a, a an exam an end of an end of quarantine exam exam on on Genesis teaching on the book of Psalms. It really is amazing. So uh, be sure and join that every day. But the cookout we haven't found the right date yet. But the cookout will not be out here on our porch. That many people, we would we would crush our porch, but we will be having it by Zoom and by Facebook, and we will be enjoying that. So please get the word out. When uh, we've had two or three people say, "Well, they contacted me and said that it was going to be out at your house on your back porch," and I said, "No, virtual." Virtual is what we're doing now, okay? So um, it's going to be a virtual cookout. And I've never heard of anything like that, but I believe I believe God in times like this gives us creativity of how we can build relationship like Jesus did after the resurrection. We can build relationship. We can build friends. And I believe we're going to have a, a good time together for that uh, cookout. So we're ready to begin. Um, you want to begin? Yeah. Okay. I sure do. Um, another thing that we have planned is uh, we're going to do a drive-by wave and blessing party 
there at the church. And so we'll let you know about that when that's getting ready to happen. We're figuring out the logistics. That's uh, that's going to happen pretty soon here. And yeah. then, uh, again, every morning except Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, you can watch uh, the Bible study with me. And if you check with the church, that can give you all the different Bible studies and uh, prayer times that are going on. You really, you really don't want to miss any of those. Cause if you will send me a text, I will forward to you a sheet that uh, that Bridget Christian made up, mm -hmm. uh, and I think she's already sent it to me. And it has it has almost all of the different dates and times mm -hmm. and who's leading it. So send me a text two zero two four three seven. Five zero two six. Send me a text and they say, "Hey, send me the list of of Bible studies, and, and I'll be is. glad to." And, what your, and what your name is, and, and please spell your name correctly. <laughs> uh, I'm having to correct spelling on some people's. What names. your name is? So yeah, okay. So we've got those things coming up. You know, normally a church our size, we have pages and pages of upcoming events, but this is all um, this is all kind of taking things. Aside, and um, a lot of people have been calling us and, and texting us and getting in touch with us. And one of the main things that they're saying is we're just, uh, we're, we're, we're becoming sad. We're becoming worried. We're becoming uh, a little bit claustrophobic. Fearful. Fearful absolutely, yes. And, um, and now that all of these different... Um, Things are coming out. All these different uh, governors are coming, and mayors are coming, and they're saying, "Well, you know, we're gonna we're gonna be doing this, and we're gonna be doing that." And now people are really thinking, "What should I do?" And and there's a lot of concern. And I am so glad to be able to say, "Well, we serve the God that passes. He has this peace that just passes all understanding." I mean, we have never been in a situation like this before, but mm -hmm. this is not a new thing to God. This isn't catching him off guard. This isn't a situation where he's like, oh my goodness, now what's going to happen? Now, what am I going to do? Can you just imagine a, a God that... Michael, come over here and explain this to me. You know, uh, a, a, couple of, a couple of days ago in Bible study, I did the worst illustration and uh, because I made my own play-doh because I didn't I didn't go get play-doh and and I made my own play-doh and, and I talked about these gods that people cry to and that they call to but they they can't hear and they can't see but we have a God who can hear and he does see and he listens to us and the cries of our heart are very important to him the cries of our spirit are very important to him yeah. So what I think I want to do tonight, if it's okay with you, Steve, and I know it is, is first, we're just going to start with praise. We're just going to thank God. And so there where you are in your living room or wherever you are in your home uh, or, in, or in your kitchen or your bedroom, wherever you are, I just want you to, we're just going to take just a couple of minutes and we're just going to Amen. thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, Lord. I thank you that you have given us this time grace. together i thank you Hallelujah. for lord that you've given us your grace that thank your you salvation lord i thank you i thank you i thank you lord that you came into our lives that you rescued us lord i thank you that i am standing on this solid rock Hallelujah. because that is where Hallelujah. you placed me lord i thank you that when my feet were sinking when my arms were heavy lord you lifted me up you lifted up my head you put rejoicing in my mouth you took, you put salvation Praise in me, you, Lord, Father. because when the enemy was close about, when claustrophobic was close to about, when depression was close on me, when sadness was near me, when I was at the point Hallelujah. of death physically, but also emotionally, also spiritually, Lord, when we got those bad reports, Lord, I thank you that you did not let us go down in that mire, that you did not let us sink down in that. But, Lord, you raised our heads. You Hallelujah. raised our hands. You lifted us up, Lord, out of that sand, out of that clay, out of those nets. And, Lord, you delivered us. And, Lord, you brought us forth safely. You brought us into a safe place. 
You brought us into a secure place. Lord, you brought us out on level ground. We are no longer hiding down in a valley. We are no longer surrounded by our enemy. But, Lord, we are sitting high and lifted up on that rock where you placed us. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we've had the power in our hands and the power in our strength and our arms to overcome these things because, Lord, you put that there. We thank you, Lord, that you've put in our heart a desire to know you, a desire to serve you, Lord, that you've given us the, the ability to obey you, Lord, that you've given us your laws and your decrees and your statutes, Lord, and we can come to your word. Yes, Lord. We can come to you, yes. Lord. We can see what we are supposed to be doing. What path we are supposed to be taking is lit up by your word, is lit up by your voice. And, Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, I thank you that you've given us this ability, this technology, where we can come together. We are not isolated in our homes. We are not alone. We have you, and now by the grace of God, where you've given Praise somebody you, the Hallelujah. mind to have this technology, Lord, that we are able to come together during this time where we should have been apart, we could have been apart, but Lord, you've made it possible. We are not apart. We are never far away from you, and Lord, we are together with one another. We are together with those that we love, with mm-hmm. those that are strangers to us, but Lord, we are answering we are answering that call into our spirit lord we are answering that call into our minds and into our hearts and we're saying lord we need more of you we need more of you so lord first of all i want to thank you i want to praise your name for those things i want to thank you lord for my brothers and my sisters and lord i want to thank you for our children in the lord and for our natural children lord i ask tonight lord that is we stand on your word as we stand on this rock Lord, that you would bring things into our lives, that you would bring peace into our lives, that you would bring understanding into our lives. Lord, that you would bring health into our lives, not just physically, but Lord, mental health, mental stamina to go through this time, to walk through this journey as though we were soldiers and warriors of the cross and not as those who are beat down, not as those who are worn down, But, Lord, those who stand tall, those who carry the cross of Christ in our arm and walk proudly and walk strong, bringing the good news, bringing the good news that you are the Savior, that you are the answer, that you are the way, the truth, and the light. And, Lord, we thank you that you continue to pour into us. But, Lord, tonight we do cry. We do ask that you lend us your ear, that you do listen to the desires of our heart tonight, Lord, because we are a nation. We are a world that is in trouble. We are hurting. And Lord, we look at brothers and sisters all around the world and we cry out on their behalf, on their defense. Lord, these who do not even know you, Lord, we ask that you would go into their homes, go into their lives. Lord, go into these homes where domestic violence is taking place. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would deliver from the hands of evil, both the one doing evil and the one who is being abused. Lord, we pray for children and wives and husbands who are in bad situations right now. And we ask that you would pour your deliverance. Lord, this unspoken request that was given by Lee and by Roger, we pray that whatever that situation is, Lord, that you would go into that bad report and change it into a praise report. Take that test and turn it into a testimony. Take that mess and turn it into a message from you, directly from your voice. Lord, we know that there are things that are going on that are straight from the coals of hell. But Lord, I praise your name that we know, we know, we know that straight from the voice of heaven that you can take your mighty breath and cool that report and change that report. Lord, Sally and Aaron have an unspoken request, but Lord, you know what that request is. You know the desires of their hearts. You know the needs that they have. You know that Angie and Art Rhodes, they have a request, Lord, and we're praying right now in the name of Jesus, whatever that request is. Lord, that you would put your mighty hand of mercy on that request. We pray for small business owners today, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. We pray for the finances that are a part of those small business owners. And we pray for our churches. We pray for people who are unemployed right now. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you would bring abundance into their life as they serve you. That you would bring blessing into their life. 
Lord, that when this is all over, people will say, I don't know how you survived. And you'll say, I know how, we'll say, I know how I survived. Yes, because Lord. my God is greater than any financial crisis. My God is greater than the stock market. My God is greater than the job opportunity in the world today. My God is greater than anything I have need of. My God is greater. He has overcome. He has gone before me. And he has made that path straight so that I can walk. I can walk. I can walk in faith. I can walk in obedience. Hallelujah. Lord, as we go forth, we do so today. And we carry your cross. We carry that mantle. And we do it proudly, Lord. We pray tonight for those who are working as first responders, Lord. Those in the medical profession. Those in the hospitals. Those in the clinics, those are going from house to house, helping these people who are so sick. Lord, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would put a hedge of protect them, a protection around them that cannot be penetrated, that no weapon formed against them should prosper. Lord, Hallelujah. we pray that you would continue to keep them strong, Hallelujah. keep them healthy. Give them, give them a strength that they never knew they had. Cause them to have an abundance of strength. And Lord, we pray that you would protect their families. Hallelujah. Protect their families while they're out protecting Hallelujah. our families. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would protect their families. And now tonight, in the name of Jesus, we declare, we cry, mm -hmm. we cry out to you. And we say, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And we put these things in your hand. And we believe, Lord. We believe, we believe, we believe. Because I know Hallelujah. he's done it for me in the past. He's done it for our lives in the past. And we have a history with him. We have, a, we have a, a long history with knowing that he is our healer. He is our deliverer. He is our benefactor. He is the one who takes care of us. In every Hallelujah. crisis we've ever faced in our life, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the risen king, has been the savior in that situation. Praise he's come God. in. Praise he's you. brought these things Praise into our God. life. He's brought these things into our situation. And Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, right now in the name of Jesus, that as these requests are coming up, that these requests are being typed in into the comments or however yeah. they're yeah. sending them to us, to our phones maybe. Right now in the name of Jesus, we are praying that every need that has been spoken, every need, every request that has been given, yeah. Lord, that you will completely uh, cover those and bring them under your blood and, and under your protection. Now, if you're sending, uh, if you're sending a request, uh, you can either put it in uh, there in the comments part, or you can um, send it to Steve's phone, 202-437-5026, mm -hmm. or to my phone. I'm going to step over there and get my phone. 202-437-6594. 6594 is mine. Mm -hmm. So I know God is going to be answering our prayers. And so, Steve, let me run and get my phone real quick. Okay, very good. While Janice steps away, I would like to personally welcome Randy Kennedy, one of my, well, my lifelong friend, um, I started hanging out with Randy when he was about about 14, I guess. And um, uh, I was, of course, older. But uh, Randy is a great friend, comes from an incredible family. Um, and uh, uh, as a matter of fact, he preached for us at National Church for, uh, a men, for the men's conference. Uh, probably six years ago, five or six years ago. And uh, Randy, I've missed you, buddy. Um, so there's a couple of things that I would like to do at this point. For one, um, if you do not have with you uh, some kind of a cracker or bread, crust of bread or whatever, uh, and some kind of juice, then go ahead and step away real quick, get it and come back and we will um, uh, and we will have communion at the conclusion of this time together. Uh, any kind of bread or cracker or whatever is fine. And if you don't have juice, I, what I've been saying is, hey, use, uh, uh, use a Diet Coke. Uh, the 
the item itself is not as essential as what we consider it to be a symbol of. And what's it a symbol of? It's a symbol of the blood and the body of our Jesus the Christ, who was uh, indeed uh, uh, hung on a cross for our sins. And so get that together and we will... Um, and, and we will have communion at the conclusion of this. I keep sticking my head up above the picture. Now, let me do this. We did something last week. I had been writing down uh, several sentences or declarations that had meant a lot to me. And and I'm going to read to you the ones that we read last week. I'm going to read those together. And then we're going to uh, later or through the rest of this, we're going to continue with that uh, reading those. And these are sentences that we declare into the darkness. We declare these into the kingdom of darkness that that we will be greater than, as the Bible tells us, greater than the attacks of the enemy. The enemy is defeated by the power of the living God. The enemy is defeated by the kingdom of light. Right. When Jesus was on the earth, I've said this many times, when Jesus was on the earth, he did not preach about himself. Jesus preached about the kingdom of God and, and how we are to be good citizens of the kingdom of God. Americans don't really know about, about kingdom. They, I mean, they think they do from history and that kind of thing, but a kingdom is not just overseen by the king, but the king actually owns everything in the kingdom. He allows it to be used, but he owns it. So I want to read to you some of these, what I feel to be kingdom statements, statements that are indeed proclamations. And if you, if you would like to write these down, write fast because um, we read these last week. So we started out with what I call number one. I soak my blood, bones, and flesh in the wonder-working power of the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Amen. I soak my blood, bones, flesh, in the wonder-working power of the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Why? Why? Why the name of Jesus? Because by that name, we are presented before God. Right. By his name, right. by no other name. Right. By no other name can we be saved but by the name of Jesus. Buddha, no big deal, uh, falls before Jesus Christ. Muhammad, uh, uh, Zoroaster, uh, the, uh, the various uh, religions of the world are of no eternal consequence. Right. Now think of that. They are of no eternal consequence consequence because Jesus being the son of God could accomplish what no other spiritual leader could accomplish and and that's that's how you uh, gauge the power of Jesus name mm -hmm. by who he was what he accomplished and what he paid for on the cross so that's number one, and I won't spend that much time on the others. <laughs> number two, I barricade. What does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit shields us. 
encapsulates us, puts a hedge of protection around us. I barricade my body from every invasion by disease germs in the name of Jesus. It's very simple. Disease, you can't live on my body. Amen. You're a usurper. You are, you're trying to get a free ride. Disease germs, you're dead in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dead in Jesus' name. Uh, I think it was Billy Sunday. I'm not totally sure of that, but one of the great evangelists of all time, um, I w wish I could think of who it was, uh, made the proclamation in one of his services, disease germs cannot live on my body. Well, there was a group of scientists that uh, uh, took him to task for that. And he said, okay, you grow the disease germs, you put them on my body, you watch it under a microscope, and you tell me what happens. How many of us would have that kind of courage during no. this? No, don't. And... And so they did. They took disease germs. They put them on his body. And you know what? The moment they touched the body of the man of God, they died. Satan, we are impervious to the attacks of the enemy as long as we stay connected mm -hmm. to the life-giving force. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Number three. That may have been my fault. That yeah, you people keep falling down. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with you. There we go. No, right. here we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, so try to stay up. Okay. Sorry. Um, number three, and and we spent a long time on this one last week. Holy Ghost fire, burn all disease deposits in my body to ashes in Jesus name holy ghost fire he's a holy ghost he it's an anomaly he is both fire and water holy ghost fire burn every disease germ every disease pool in my body uh, deposit my body to ashes in the name of Jesus. You know, last week I prayed specifically that one over Molly because she had been sick for days with a kidney stone. Yeah. For days with a kidney stone. And the next morning, you know, she passed it. She passed it and she was did. immediately completely well. So, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. All right. And, uh, what's Tracy's son's name? Michael. Michael. Um, Michael Williams. Michael Williams. Michael Williams, when we came to the uh, to the prayer service last week, right. we had received word that Michael Williams was not feeling well and had gone in for a um, COVID-19 COVID test and Everyone expected the worst. Got a call early this week and said, hey, last week we got Michael's test absolutely negative. And everybody, on our, I, I sent out the text on that, and everybody in the, on the text for our pastoral staff would send back, praise God, thank you, Jesus, and just praising God for what God had let's, accomplished. Let's just take one minute here. Uh, we've had some requests come in that yeah, especially uh, would, you know, that would speak to their request. Yeah. And um, one is your cousin Chase. We're going to be praying for him. And uh, also for Tanea Swan, we're going to be praying for her. For Teresa Holder, we're going to be praying for her. And so... Uh, let's just take this, and at this time, these people that you, Nakia. 
Nikia uh, Knight. Nikia, Nikia, Nikia Knight. Knight. Uh huh. She has six children, and she t she uh, is feeling badly, and she is waiting for the test. Uh, and has six kids, and she's having to stay away from them. Yeah. And so we're we're praying for that situation. So why don't we just say that again? And those of you who are there at home, and you have a request, uh, let's call those out. Some of these that are being sent in, I'm going to uh, kind of assume you don't want those said out loud, and so we won't. But as soon as this goes off, we definitely will be calling those requests out loud. So if if you have one that you don't want us to mention uh, while we're on live, then if you'll just let me know that, then of course we will not. And so that one is, what is that one again? Uh, okay. Holy Ghost Fire. Holy Ghost Fire. Say it with us. Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost Fire. Fire. Burn all disease, disease deposits, deposits in, in my, my body, body to ashes. ashes. To ashes. Burn all disease deposits in my body to ashes in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. All disease, Holy, all disease, all disease, and all of the leftovers of, of anyone who has been suffering with any disease. So right now we're going to pray and we're going to come against that. We're going to be specifically praying, praying for those that we mentioned. But then there in your home, you pray for those that, that you are calling out their names and you're calling out to, to God, and so we're going to say it one more time. You say it, and then I'm going to repeat it, and they're going to say it with me as we repeat it. Are you ready? Holy Ghost Fire. Holy Ghost Fire. Burn all disease deposits. Burn all disease deposits. In my body to in my ashes. In my body to ashes. In the name of in Jesus. the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Father, Jesus. Father, we come against all disease. Yes, we do, dear Jesus. Satan is a usurper. Yes, Jesus. And we are just coming against we pray this to every disease. Yes, Lord. Every disease yes, germ. Jesus. Every, every indication of yes. disease. Come against this uh, coronavirus. Come yes, against Jesus. H1N1. Yes, come Jesus. against. Come against all the way back in 1918. Yes. Come against the the swine flu, Father, uh, the Spanish flu. Father, Jesus. we just pray right now yes, that you will Jesus. elevate yes, us Jesus. in this time to a place yes, of walking healed by the Jesus. power of God. Let it let it just motivate us and move us by the power of a living God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you can accomplish in one moment yes, in our Jesus. bodies yes. with the blood of Jesus. Yes. Cover us, keep us, use us, save us. Father, by your stripes, yes, we Jesus. are healed. Yes, we, we thank are. you for that. Yes, and Lord, we thank you for that. Yes. Now, Father, as we continue this time together, give to us authority over all the power of the enemy. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus', In Jesus name. name. Hallelujah. There was one that we kind of finished on last week, and it's it's oddly written. It's oddly stated, but um, but I, I I feel like visually it makes a lot of sense to me. It says this. Blood of Jesus, laminate my life. You know what hmm. lamination is, right? That's right. that's when you take uh, plastic, put it over sheets of paper or doc important documents, and you you put that through heat. You put it through a press and heat, and it laminates it against the attack of anything that would disintegrate that document. So, blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Not not, not lamination stuff. Right. Not plastic. Right. Blood of Jesus. Laminate my life in the name of Jesus. Amen. With the blood of Jesus over us, 
laminating us against the attack of the enemy. It's like spraying water on a laminated document. It's like something coming up and bouncing off of that document and falling to the ground. Mm -hmm. Satan has no power over the believer. That's right. That is right. No power. The only power Satan has over the believer is what we allow him to have. Yeah. That's a pretty direct statement. Yeah. And there are those that would take opposition to that. But God has given us authority so that even serpents and scorpions mm -hmm. should have no effect on us as believers. What did, what did Paul do when he wound up on the Isle of Patmos? What did he do? He threw some wood onto the fire. There was a snake in the wood, and the snake came out and fastened himself to Paul. And you know what? Paul didn't even get excited. Everybody else stood back and they said, well, he's going to die now. Mm -hmm. He was a big guy a while ago, but he's, he's going to die now. Mm -hmm. But he, what did he do? He looked at that. He shook it back off into the fire. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, and refused to swell. I love that. Oh, I do. Too. I do. Too. I, I love it. We, I refuse to be overcome with this virus. I refuse. And the thing is, should it come on me, I proclaim that it is dying because it's on a body of a believer, of a, of a, of a man of God. And I'm saying that not arrogantly. But it can't come on me. It'll die if it gets to me. But... If indeed I should have reaction by his stripes, Amen. I am healed. Amen. I go all the way from can't touch me. You can't touch this. I go all the way from can't touch this to I'm healed anyway. I am healed. Amen. I'm healed now Amen. before I get sick. Amen. And if we would start start realizing that, mm -hmm. uh, my uncle and I were interacting by way of text, uh, maybe yesterday, day before. He said this. He said, Steve, he said, your dad said something to me. He said, I was in the hospital for three straight weeks. I forget the condition, uh, but it was very serious. I wish I could remember. And very serious condition, and he said, uh, my dad walked in, and he said, Kenneth, you're a part of a great family. This family has a long history with God. You have a long history with God. Begin right now to proclaim healing in your body. I believe you proclaim healing until you believe it. Amen. Does That's that make right. sense? Yeah. If you just say it and don't believe it, it will do nothing for you. Just keep saying, I am healed. Amen. I am healed by Amen. the power of God. I am healed by his stripes. I am healed by his stripe, stripes. I was already healed. I'm healed. And he, Kenneth told me the next day he was up out of the bed and he left the hospital. I'm telling you, we have seen extraordinary things take place in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Blood of Jesus, laminate my life in the name of Jesus. Laminate me. Shield me. 
In the first chapter of the book of Ephesians, I've told you this so many times. It says that we are chosen by God, purchased by Jesus Christ, and sealed, laminated, sealed by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Father, we, we know we're chosen. We know we've been bought with a price. Now, Father, ask your Holy Spirit to seal yes. us yes. against the attack of the enemy. And we're believing that. you got to believe it. Don't just say it as some kind of a for formula or incantation. This is not an incantation. This is a statement of fact. It's a statement of truth, and it's a statement of your belief. Heal me, Amen. Lord, in the name of Jesus. So, Here's the next one. I'll read it. We didn't read this last week. I silence the voice of sickness that is speaking against my life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sickness is speaking against your life. Sickness is pointing at you and saying, I own that body. That body is a natural body. And I own that body, and I'm going to take that body whenever I want to. And so what we say is I silence the voice of sickness speaking against my life in the name of Jesus. That one would really, to me, come against depression. It would. It, it would really come against oh my goodness. depression where, you know, you have, uh, if you've ever been, if you've ever been depressed, if you've ever had times in your life where you were having doubts or if you've ever had time in your life when you were worrying and, and honestly right now, if you are not some worried or having some doubts or having some confusion in your life, then whatever is speaking into your life because uh, today on the bible in our bible study we were talking about how you stay on the path and you don't let evil take you from either side yeah. and and that's what the voice of sickness is that is saying to everybody every time you sneeze oh i hope that's not coronavirus sorry or every time you cough oh i hope that's not coronavirus sorry you know, a couple of days, our grandson, Justin, uh, just had a slight fever, and immediately we were, like, you know, torn to pieces. And um, we immediately began to pray and come against that thing. Because, you know, in the 23rd Psalm, it talks about you go through the shadow of death. So yeah. you're not even going through death. You're just going through the shadow. But you, are, you become so fearful and so worried that that will happen that you are going to get sick, that you become depressed, you become sad, you become worried, you become worried about other people that you can't see anymore. And, and right now, that feeling of, I am alone in this, and that feeling of uh, nobody knows the answer, nobody knows what to do, that is, that's the voice of sickness speaking into us because, <clears throat> because fear is sickness. Fear. And Janice, so many of our elderly at National live by themselves. Right. So they don't have anyone to join with them in opposition to that fear. Right. And we've heard from several who have gotten more and more fearful as they go along and depressed. And I believe the long-term effect of that depression is going to be extended depression. So uh, especially if you know of folks in our congregation who are, um, uh, who are in depression or who live by themselves, please find a way to give them a call and let them know, hey, 
I'm standing with you. I am, uh, I am standing with you against your time alone in this. I mean, they can't even get out to go to the store, a lot of them. So, right, right. So, uh, so please reach out to folks and let them know that you love them, that you appreciate them. Let them know that you are praying for them. Yeah. Because they need it. And you know what? You need to do it because you receive back off of anything you give out. That's true. You receive so, back. What would you think about now? It's 825 if we if we took our communion and we put these things that we've mentioned and these requests that uh, continue to come in, uh, if we could put those, um, just put that all under the blood of Jesus, yeah. right? Yeah. Because You're wanting to stop because you want me to stop talking. No, I love the sound of your voice. <laughs> So go ahead and, and gather up your communion elements. Steve and I have some Ritz crackers. Ritz crackers. We Everything goes better with the Ritz. We. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Jesus, come quickly. Um, so um, tomorrow morning uh, at, the, at my Bible study, I do communion on Saturday morning uh, also with all of the Men and women who are uh, who are watching and who uh, are who join with me, and so tonight we are going to do just what you've just been talking about. Well, we were going to come against and we're going to silence the voice of disease because when Jesus died on the cross, when He took those stripes, that's what that's what gives us the authority to say in Jesus' name and yep. in the blood of Jesus that we. Come against okay. anything that would okay. come against us, and and we come against any violence. We come in against any destruction that would come against us, and would come against us. We come against that in the name of Jesus. Yes, we can. We can turn that thing right around, and we can say, Satan. Not only and am I not listening to you, but you are defeated because I am under the blood of Jesus. Yes. So as we take this bread, as we take this juice. We do so, and we do so in praying for those who are who are joining us online, but also those who uh, we are asking to pray for. All of these names that have been coming in, and all of those who have sent unspoken requests, and those of you who have sent into our phone and and onto Facebook. So we're just going to say that as we take this bread and as we take this juice. And Steve and I do this every day. And when we do, we always take it together. And here's what we say. We come against Satan. We come against disease. We come against any fears. We come against any distractions. We come against any cause of death in our family, in the family of our children, the lives of our children. We pray protection around our children, our children's children, against we pray protection around your families and your children and your children's children. And Lord, as we take this bread tonight, we do so taking the whole healed body yes. of Jesus Christ. And we put it in with our blood. We put it in with our bodies. And as we take this, we do say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, by your stripes, by your stripes, we are healed. We are healed. Let's take the bread. Just take a moment and just thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you that you gave us this communion process to remember you. Yes. That we would not forget. That we would not forget yes jesus but we remember what you did yes, on the cross you, for us that you took that by by the stripes on your back we're healed and by the blood you shed yes we are healed yes Father, we thank you all healing salvation is a healing yes healing is a healing father healing is the breaking of the Attack of the enemy yes. over our life in all things. Yes. 
and we claim it in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we proclaim the blood of Jesus, Kenny and Marsha are watching. Mm. And I know that Steve learned from his grandmother, Kenneth's mom, that to say the blood of Jesus, I pray these things in the blood, by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. And Steve prays that over our family, and he will say, my grandmother used to pray by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And so as we take communion every night, we are thinking about Grandmother Woodard and her faithfulness and her dedication to her family, yes, but to her Lord. Yes. So tonight as we take this juice, we do so and we do so in remembrance of you for the blood that you shed, for the price that you paid. Lord, for the transgressions, transgressions that were ours, but you took them for us. And Lord, tonight, by the blood of Jesus, we are healed. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Father, bind us together as a community of faith. Bind us together. Here we are, we're spending so much more time with our families than we have in years past. And Lord, we thank you for that. There's good things that have come out of this. And that is that we are getting closer with our families. But Father, we also know that there are those that spousal abuse and kids abuse has multiplied during this time frame because we're right in each other's face. Father, I pray that you cover us and keep us and protect us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So until tomorrow morning, when you join Janice at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, um, we will say good evening this evening. But we also are declaring that over you, there is a power. Yes. There is an authority. Yes. No weapon formed against you can possibly prosper. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. We love you so much. God bless you. We're gonna we're gonna head on.